Good afternoon, I'm Janelle Lusick. Welcome to our Musique Royale cookie concert, starting back up this series after a summer break. And for those kiddos that are tuning in, I hope you had a wonderful summer holidays. Today we have Dan McKinnon, a singer-songwriter based in Halifax with us. And what really drew me to Dan's music when I initially came across it was his wonderful ability of taking significant events and people from our province of Nova Scotia and bringing their stories to life through his beautiful original songs. For those of you who have never been to a cookie concert before, this series takes place from October until June and concerts are the first Saturday of every month at 2 p.m. at the Lunenburg School of the Arts. Please, let me know what you think, and I hope you enjoy. The evening's upon us, we've no time to tarry. Let the song now begin, there's naught can go wrong. Day's troubles that daunt you, leave far, far behind you. It's time to away on the wings of a song. Old tales I'll bring to you, new songs I'll sing for you, of melody, chorus, meter, and rhyme. Let there be stories of struggles and glories to lift your hearts high on the wings of a song. Passions and hunger of days I was younger Though cold winds of loneliness stung my heart strong In music was pleasure, my one constant treasure That bore me aloft on the wings of a song Old tales I'll bring to you, new songs I'll sing for you of melody, chorus, meter, and rhyme. Let there be stories of struggles and glories to lift your hearts high on the wings of a song. It's not my intent to waylay or mislead you my hope to bring respite when days are too long My wish as a singer one melody lingers To speed you safe home on the wings of a song Old tales I'll bring to you, new songs I'll sing for you Of melody, chorus, meter and rhyme that there be stories of struggles and glories To lift your hearts high on the wings of a song To lift your hearts high on the wings of a song Well, hello folks. My name is Dan McKinnon. I'm a folk singer from Halifax, Nova Scotia. And over the last 30 years or so, I've been singing a lot of songs that I've written about Nova Scotia and Atlantic Canada uh, in many places and to many audiences and people all over. I've written songs about oh, various events and, uh, and uh, various places and various people. And one person in particular, I was reading a book back in 1984 on traditional crafts in Nova Scotia. And it went through all the different places, people making brooms and people making schooners and, and just little runabouts. But one person who really attracted my attention, his, his, the way he spoke of, of what he had done, was a fellow by the name of Everett Lonis. Everybody knew him here in Lunenburg as Bud. And Bud, started work at 14 years old. He worked 
10 hour days, six days a week, and made a dollar 50 a week. And he had one of the most important jobs here in, in Lunenburg. His job, just close to the waterfront, not far from where we are right now, was in the sail loft. Bud was a sailmaker. And he made sails for all the vessels, including the Blue Nose, and watched them as they headed out during the spring after their fishing on the banks. And the way he talked about it, how everything was so wonderful, and, and uh, yes, it was hard work, but he enjoyed, it seemed, every minute of it. And then towards the end of, of the conversation, he was saying, well, you know, I've made uh, sales for the little runabouts, you know, the four and a half sales, but there's not much call for sailmakers anymore, or the sails. The ships are gone, and so are the sailmakers. So I wrote this for Bud, Sailmaker. Been 60 years a sailmaker, learned from my father's hand. We sewed up slips of canvas, double stitching every strand. We worked from dawn to dusk, making 50 cents a day. Now the time of sailing ships is all but gone away. We sewed up sets of mainmast sails for the Blue Nose and Cape Ann. When we couldn't use machines, we'd sew them all by hand. Bear masts sat there in the harbor while we worked both night and day. Oh, what joy when we looked out and watched them sail away. And I wander sometimes down to the workshop just to watch the daylight pass away. Wipe away the dust from the bench tops filled with rust. Broken needles left where they lay. I've watched the big fleets come and go, the schooners anchored in the bay. They glide without a sound but for the slapping of the waves. I've watched the ships go proudly out, I've seen the men obey. Now the time of sailing ships is all but gone away And I wander sometimes down to the workshop Just to watch the daylight pass away Wipe away the dust from the bench tops filled with rust Broken needles left where they lay. Been sixty years a sailmaker, learned from my father's hand. We sewed up slips of canvas, double stitching every strand. I worked from dawn to dusk, making fifty cents a day. Now the time of sailing ships has all but gone away. Now the time of sailing ships is all but gone away. Now the time of sailmakers is all but gone away. that's just one of the many stories, as I said, I found in that book of traditional crafts in Nova Scotia, but a very poignant story in the fact that really there aren't any sailmakers anymore. There are a few of them around, and I know one who's living here in, in Lunenburg County, but uh, she's keeping fairly busy, which, which is great because there aren't many sailmakers about. Another story I heard about 
happened from the years between the years from uh, 1943 to 1947. It was an event in Canadian history that I'd never read about and never learned about in school, and I wonder why. During that time, over 43,000 women came through Halifax Harbor and Pier 21. Pier 21, of course, now being a national historic site. With them, the 43,000 women, they brought over 21,000 children. And they were affectionately known in Canadian history as the War Brides. Why we never heard of it in school, I, I have no idea. Me living in Halifax most of my life and having my mother and grandmother born there and raised there, they never mentioned anything about it. And these women, they sailed across the Atlantic, some of them during wartime. And when they reached Halifax, the first place they stepped foot in was Pier 21, first place in Canada. And when they got there, there were people there to greet them and check all their papers, their passports, their birth certificates, check their medical uh, uh, papers, and even did a medical of them just to make sure there was nothing wrong. And then after they finished, they were able to step outside their first glimpse of Halifax, first glimpse of Canada, and they went immediately on to a train. And from there, they went to parts right across Canada. They were some of the bravest and most exceptional women I've ever met in my life. Amazing the strength that they had to leave everything behind, the friends, family, and relations, their surroundings, and follow that young Canadian boy off to the wilds of Canada. And since I hadn't heard about this, I thought there are probably many people who haven't heard about it as well. So I decided to write a little song about the war brides. This is Kith and Kin. It's not that I so want to leave In truth, I'd rather stay Than leave the only home I've known So very far away We stood within cathedral walls And swore we'd never part I follow now the stilling wake Of he who won my heart I still recall my mother's tears As we sat down to tea The sound of father's breaking voice As he called out to me Daffodils we planted, being washed by gentle rains. The time has come for me to leave, I'll ne'er be back again. Goodbye years of hunger I thought would never end. Goodbye tears of sorrow each time I lost a friend. The endless days, the blacked out nights, when fire rained from the sky. Goodbye, my land of kith and kin, I'll love you till I die. Soon we'll board that waiting ship, we're sailing with the tide. One last hug, a kiss, a tear. Perhaps our last goodbye The dark side band, the waving flags The tears upon my cheek No breath I have within my lungs No words of I to speak Goodbye years of hunger I thought would never end Goodbye tears of sorrow Each time I lost a friend the endless days, the blacked out nights When fire rained from the sky Goodbye, my land of kith and kin I'll love you till I die I 
I still can see the youthful face that boarded ship that day To leave her home for Canada, three thousand miles away Though sixty years has come and gone, the feelings still remain To follow him who won my heart, I'd do it all again Goodbye years of hunger, I thought would never end Goodbye tears of sorrow Each time I lost a friend The endless days, the blacked out nights When fire rained from the sky Goodbye my land of kith and kin I'll love you till I die Goodbye years of hunger I thought would never end Goodbye tears of sorrow Each time I lost a friend the endless days, the blacked out nights, when fire rained from the sky. Goodbye, my land of kith and kin, I'll love you till I die. was many people who had a profound impact on Canada. The children they brought along with them and uh, how many of them there were. It's one of the greatest influxes of people in Canadian history. Another influx happened oh, roughly not quite 200 years before that. After the American War of Revolution, the Loyalists who'd fought on the British side moved up to Canada and had free land because they stayed loyal. One such young fellow didn't live too far from here. Lived down around the Oak Island area. His name was Daniel McGuinness, and part of his parcel of land was half an island. So one day he decided to go out and survey what was his. And he rode across to this little island. It was only about 100 yards or so to get there. And he looked up. And as he was walking along the shore, he saw a pulley attached to a limb from a tree stretched out across a clearing. And he thought, that's odd, so he went up to take a look. And as he got there, he noticed underneath where the pulley was that there was a great depression of land. That was even odder. So he went back and he told a few friends they went back the next day and started digging. Well, that was in 1795. It wasn't until 1804 that some other people started to dig. They, they formed a little conglomerate in 1804, and they organized, and they started digging as well. They dug down 12 feet, and they hit oaken logs and clay, bits of gravel, bits of what they thought might have been residue of coconut husks. They pulled all that out and they dug down another 10 feet and again hit oak logs and clay, gravel, and again more residue from what they thought were coconut husks. Every 10 feet they dug down, they kept hitting that. When they got to 90 feet, they hit something that sounded very different. They looked down as they swept things away with their hands, and they looked down, and they found this large, black, flat, onyx stone with writings on it. And they thought, well, we must be close to the treasure. Of course, when I grew up, everybody knew that it was Captain Kidd's treasure that was buried under Oak Island. Well, since it was lately decided to give it a rest, and they would go back the next morning and claim their prize. As fate would have it, however, when they got back to the hole, the money pit as it's now known, they found that 92-foot hole, 63 feet full of water. When they lifted that black onyx stone, it had popped some sort of seal for two different channels, and once the high tide came in, the money pit filled up with water. 
I've always been fascinated by Oak Island and the stories that we used to hear around campfires late at night in scout jamborees and cub jabberies. So I decided it best to write a song about that as well. Come closer to the fire Now don't forget a chair Here pour yourself One more drink of whiskey The clouds are growing darker We're headed for a gale And the time is ripe For the listening you may talk of hounds with fire-red eyes, lights floating on the breeze. It's the bicentennial eve of its discovery. Young McGinnis spied the sign while walking on the strand. And thus began the mystery of Oak Island. Daniel set out in the morning with a shovel in his hand Arm in arm he strode with both of his companions At twelve feet lay stones barred the way Sure not with oak and logs and clay Oak platforms jarred them every ten feet after Ninety feet the blessed stone But none could read the warning They dragged it out and waited till the morning The sun rose golden from the sea It shimmered on their hopes and dreams but all lay under sixty feet of water And the local people said There's no need to raise the dead We don't want dealings with the devil's booty Already six have died Still many more will try To solve the mystery of Oak Island Rumors come Rumors go, as to just what lay below Captain Kitts is not the only treasure missing There's the treasure of Tombez Or the crown jewels of France Or Shakespeare's manuscripts is penned by Francis Bacon Many since have tried their hand Say that it's the tearing up the land They spent more than they ever will recover When the money's all but gone Many more will come along the treasure calling them from far beneath Oak Island And the local people said There's no need to raise the dead We don't want dealings with the devil's booty Already six of died Still many more will try To solve the mystery of Oak Island Past us by, and the amber's glow has died. There's one last drink of whiskey in the bottle. I have one more thing to say before you're on your way, then I'll bid it you until a new tomorrow. My tales has reached its end, just like the mortal lives of men who go one. Round the island in delusion With the dreams fresh in their mind Of what they hoped they'd find They were all they left behind Upon Oak Island And the local people said There's no need to raise the dead We don't want dealings with the devil's booty Already six have died to solve the mystery of Oak Island And the local people said There's no need to raise the dead We don't want dealings with the devil's booty Already six have died Still many more will try
can't beat a good ghost story. I love ghost stories. In fact, when I was much younger, I read uh, Blue Nose Ghosts when it first came out. I slept with the light on for a month after reading that book. Well, this next song is one I wrote uh, because I knew quite a bit about it. It's an event that happened just over a hundred years ago in Halifax. And I used to hear many stories about this particular event from my grandmother. She was a girl of six years old when everything happened on December 6th, 1917. She was living in the north end of Halifax. She was kept home from school that particular morning because she had the whooping cough and it saved her life. Because that was the morning when the emo, a relief vessel, was heading out of Halifax Harbor and the Mont Blanc was heading into Halifax Harbor. Nobody knew what was on the Mont Blanc because she wasn't flying any flags to let people know. So as they were coming, the emo going out and the Mont Blanc heading into Halifax, they ended up in the very same shipping lane. Well, the Mont Blanc signaled and said, we're going to port. Well, the emo signaled and said, well, we're going to starboard. And the Mont Blanc said, we're going to port. And the emo said, we're going to starboard. And they kept going like that until they collided. The crew of the Mont Blanc immediately lowered lifeboats and rowed for the farthest shore because they knew what was on board. She had 186,000 kilograms of picric acid, benzene, and TNT. She was, in effect, a floating bomb. In the ensuing explosion, the city of Halifax was leveled. Over 2,000 people were killed. Almost 2,000 people blinded. Many of them school children, because this happened at six minutes after nine on a school day. And those who had classrooms with windows facing the harbor rushed to the windows to watch the ships burning. And when the explosion happened, the glass flew. It's reported to be the largest man-made explosion prior to the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki when they dropped the atom bombs in the Second World War. Not far from my grandmother lived another young girl who was six years old and kept home from school that day as well. Young Dorothy was sitting on the settee, listening to her mother and brother practicing hymns for the upcoming Sunday service. Her father was the Methodist preacher in the, in the North End. When the explosion happened, her father was thrown right out of the house, and the house collapsed on top of young Dorothy and her mother and brother. Her father came back to the house and dug through the rubble and was able to pull out young Dorothy alive, but his wife and son didn't make it. He went back two days later and dug through the remains of what was left of his home, and he found only one object completely intact. That object was a cup. And the cup had a handle in the shape of an angel. And there were two words inscribed on the front of that cup. I remember it well, it was the calmest of days. I remember the sky looked so blue. Mommy and Carmen were practicing hymns when the light from the window shone through. With a flash, the earth trembled, the flooring gave way, the ceiling and walls tumbled. The only thing saved from our old house but me was this wonderful cup they found. It said, remember me, 
Remember me Inscribed on its side Were two words to abide by Just enough time to make school by nine. You could feel tension spark in the air. Alarm shrieked and howled. We followed the sound as the new fire engine roared by. With Gordon running second and Alan in third, the world came apart at the sea. I awoke on the ground, found Gordon. We looked around. Three days later, Alan's body was found. Remember me. Remember me. Inscribed on its side were two words to abide by. North End with the pealing of bells. We remember that most tragic day. The whole world responded with heartfelt kindness, a debt we can never repay. Still, stories are told of bravery and sacrifice, a work of God who's to say. But the one thing that helped keep the lost one so dear is this wonderful cup found that day. It said, remember me. Remember me. Inscribed on its side were two words to abide by. Inscribed on its side were two words to abide by. Remember me. If you ever find yourself in Halifax and you happen to be at the Maritime Museum, They've got, of course, a wonderful exhibit there, the Halifax, and Ex Halifax Explosion exhibit. And there, behind glass, is the dress that young Dorothy was wearing that day. And they also have many other stories and artifacts about the Halifax Explosion. Well, that was quite a horrific event, which really shaped a lot of Nova Scotians, myself especially, since my grandmother went through it. And it is an important part of Nova Scotian history. It's nice to know there were other things that happened in this province that were a lot more pleasant and, lot, and brought people together in a nicer way. This is one of the people who I was very fortunate to um, write about. A lot of times it's not my intent to write about something, but something outside happens and causes me to write. And this particular song, I was asked by the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia if I could write a folk song about Maud Lewis's house. Maud Lewis was a painter from down around Digby Way. She didn't have that easy of a life. And the house she lived in was not the largest by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, the whole house is sitting in one small part of the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia where people can come in and look at it. And the reason they can look at it is that because it was such a small place and a dismal place, Ma decided 
to lighten the place up. And what she did, through the arthritis, because she couldn't hold her hands more than clenched like that, she could just barely hold a paintbrush. But she painted flowers on the stairs and birds on the walls, and she painted oxen and anything she could do to brighten this place up. And living in poverty most of her life, she ended up becoming a folk artist, fairly by chance. Somebody had seen her work and loved it. One of her paintings even ended up in the White House when Richard Nixon was there. And as I said, I was given the wonderful opportunity to write a song about Maude Lewis and her house and sing it on the opening of the Maude Lewis wing of the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia, singing to the house and all the people who were there. This house. This house From where you watch the world go by This house Touched here and there with childhood eyes Every surface your blank page A self-painted gilded cage With bluebirds flying free Painted flowers on the stairs Blooming everywhere, now here for all to see Within this house These hands, they could only do so much These hands, now curled and spent around the brush Did you paint away the pain, paint away the tears and the misery While painting stories from the past, times that did not last Childhood's memories with these hands Witness to the passing ways These eyes Now glancing from a stranger's gaze They saw the oxen and the cart They were the window to your heart Open wide enough to breathe While painting brightly colored scenes Pictures found in dreams Only you With these eyes This house Now silent witness to your life This house Once full with hardship and with life Yet does a guard unspoken dreams Preserve silent memories unseen by curious eyes. Quietly waiting for the brush, your loving, tender touch to caress it one more time. This house, from the art world to another world altogether. If you remember the second song that I sang was about sailmakers and how important they were. Well, there's something more iconic that helps me identify myself as a blue noser, having been born and brought up in this part of the world. And that, of course, is all related to the town of Lunenburg, but more importantly, to a vessel, and that vessel, of course, is the Blue Nose. And it is my firm belief 
that if it was not for Angus Walters, we would never know of the Blue Nose because Angus knew every bit of that ship, every inch of her. He knew how she would handle on whatever winds, whatever seas could be thrown at them. In fact, I remember re uh, watching an interview once. with Angus's son, Spike. And he said, you know, if dad was out and there was a fire on the Blue Nose and there was a fire at home, it would take dad a little bit of time to think about where he'd have to run. And I know he'd choose home, but it would be a pretty tough decision. I wrote this song, The Captain and the Queen. It was the 75th anniversary of the launching of the Blue Nose. It was the 50th anniversary of her demise on a Haitian reef. And I'm so glad when I wrote this that Angus's grandson, Wayne, was the skipper of the Blue Nose too. It was nice to have it back in the family. The captain and the queen. She breathed the last one January evening She met her fate so far away from home Short of mass she hauled freight for a living Then struck a reef upon some foreign shore He heard the news and stood still for a moment His eyes welled up with tears he couldn't hide You could hear it in his voice as he tried speaking they say that night a part of him had died He could hear the wind howling to her again Who knows and her captain running free He could feel their pride and grace For glory they would raise To be the best, the captain and the queen They christened her one March morning, she turned her head toward the open sea. A thousand voices cried for victory, for pride. They cheered them on, the captain and the queen. Now the season on the grand bank set her metal. Judgment day is swiftly drawing near. Stout hearts are beating fast as a finish line race past. They beat the best, the captain. And the queen, you could hear the wind howling through her rigging. Who knows, and her captain running free. You could feel the pride and grace for glory they would raise to be the best, the captain and the queen. Hard for 18 seasons on the Grand Banks. From Gloucester's challenge, never did they stray. But the days of sail had passed, he stayed with her till the last. Then he cast her lines and watched her steam away. Now the captain has a grandson who's a captain. The Blue Nose has a daughter who's a queen. Together, once again, running high against the wind. Forever one, the captain and the queen. You can hear the wind howling to her again. The nose and her captain running free. You can feel their pride and grief for glory they will praise. To be the best, the captain and the queen. You can hear the wind howling to her again. The nose and her captain running their pride and grace, for glory they will raise, to be the best, the captain and the queen. You can feel their pride and grace, for glory they will raise, for everyone the captain and the queen.
Well, thank you for listening to my stories and uh, songs about Nova Scotia. I've got one more song to uh, sing for you now. And it's a song mostly about the folk singer's life, I guess you could say. Things have changed now. Uh, I used to do a fair amount of traveling and uh, things have changed a little bit. But it's wonderful to be down here in Lunenburg and uh, uh, for music royale and uh, to be singing here at the Lunenburg School of the Arts. As I said, this is a song about a folk singer's life. Uh, I guess my life, in a sense, for the last 30 plus years. Um, I thank you all for, for listening, for being a part of the audience. Uh, I thank you for coming out to the shows for all the different artists. Thing is, if uh, we don't have an audience, we don't get a chance to do what we absolutely love to do. So I thank you for coming along and sharing your time as well. Wandering days. Stay safe, folks. to travel to my 